All right, Trisha. So most leaders that we talk to, business owners out there who, well, they want to grow their thing. They believe in what they're doing. They're excited about it. But many times business owners start out on what we call the treadmill of survival. They're running, 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 and it feels like they don't have any traction. And what I have found is that many of them they don't really know what to do with their time. They know they're extremely busy, many of them working 70, 80 hours a week, not afraid to work hard, but where their time is going is not always put in the most productive or high return on investment activities. And I found that a lot of business owners maybe don't even understand the value of their time or that it's their biggest asset. What do you tell business owners about their time and why it matters so much? Yeah, I, I could not agree more. There are um, so many people spinning their wheels um, and and maybe investing in the things that don't have high ROI. I mean, we 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 have such a limited resource in our time. So I personally am so maniacal about what I'm going to spend my time on, how much time I'm going to spend on that thing, and honestly, being really clear about the things I'm not going to spend my time on. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily run that filter through their mind. Mm. They think about what they should be doing, but maybe they don't spend enough time thinking about what they should not be doing. And the, the things you should not be doing could fall into a couple different categories. Either to your point, Daniel, it's something that doesn't have, it doesn't have real ROI. It's something that um, isn't going to show up in the business at the end of the day. It's minutia or it's, a, it's back-end work. Um, and you can't actually see that in the long-term vision and growth strategy of your organization. I think as you know, the leader of an organization or company, the things you should and can be focused on are the things only really you can do. And as the leader, it's, it's those high level things like casting vision for the organization, you know, breathing into your team with your core values and your growth strategy and vision. Hmm. Those are the things that we all know we should spend time on, but in order to spend the right amount of time on those things, you actually have to say no to a lot of other things. Because to your point, you could work 80 hours a week, but should you? Mm. And then are you the best you when you do show up? Because are you burnt out and overworked and overwhelmed by all the things you're trying to do? Mm -hmm. I know one of the things you guys specialize in is delegating to a personal assistant. You guys work with hundreds and hundreds of leaders all over the country and pair them with executive assistant services, somebody that's going to be their business partner and help pick up a lot of those things that they don't personally have to be doing. And I have an incredible executive assistant that I work with here. And knowing how amazing this is at this point, and then looking back at all the silly things that I tried to do myself in my journey, I go, I never should have been doing that to begin with. I was so naive to think I'm the best person to do this. I'm just going to take care of it because when my assistant does it, Shelly does it faster. She does it better. She's, she's more efficient than I would ever be. And she actually enjoys it. You know, I found Trisha, so many of these things I was doing just out of duty, out of out of like, oh, I just have to do this to be responsible. Whereas Shelly's like, she's wired for this. Like she really does thrive in these activities. And it's this beautiful partnership where I'm better off, she's better off, and the team's better off because we're getting more things done uh, together as a partnership. But what do you say to leaders who maybe haven't had that experience? They're going, I don't know. I, I, I get the idea of having an assistant. I, maybe they run my calendar and book my travel. But I mean, what do they really do that I can't just go ahead and take care of myself. Yes, I love that. I feel the same way about my assistant, Melissa. Um, she really does help me uh, 10x my capacity, truly. Um, there, it, it, To me, it is such an important relationship, um, an executive and an executive assistant, because they really do free you up to do those things we talked about, free you up to um, do the things that only a leader can do. Now, what I love what you said is so true, and we see it all the time, is that most leaders and entrepreneurs don't thrive in the details, mm -hmm. <laughs> nor should you be in them. So it, the beauty of it is that there are literally people, people wired 
to thrive mm -hmm. on details. They were born, bred, and excited about details and spreadsheets and planning travel and calendars. And that that is their happy place. So I think once you become, you really start recognizing that um, everybody has their own zone of genius. Mm -hmm. um, and it, there are people who complement each other and sit in their different zone of genius. So if my zone of genius may be, you know, sales, marketing, vision, and maybe my my weak areas are administration, CRM management, calendar planning, well, then you have that partner that can come alongside you and really fill your gaps. You kind of become that yin and the yang where they're able to partner with you and take care of the things that either you're not really good at or you actually don't like doing them like who you know so letting that stuff go and really building into that relationship is is so important i mean my assistant melissa um really gives me peace i tell her all the time when when she helps me kind of really just accomplish the things that get done in a given day or week that what she does is she gives me a great night's sleep mm. because um i know the things are handled and I don't have to be the one to handle them. So I'm unburdened yes. by the fact that she's there for me. So she really does unburden me um, from the, the details um, that may sit in what my my day to day looks like. It seems like you're saying there are people who are really wired for those details. And as leaders, we should not be bogged down in those details. I'm curious, how do you balance this idea of not being bogged down in the details with a commitment to excellence because we teach leaders everywhere that part of having a peak performing business is your product experience especially has to be excellent and that means all the details are taken care of with excellence and I, I think it's the wrong idea and I, I don't think this is what you're advocating but we shouldn't just dump all the details off on somebody and hope they just hit, take care of themselves and then never uh, inspect what we expect I mean we still have a responsibility as leaders to ensure that the frontline experience with the customers is amazing but it sounds like you're saying that we're not personally doing those things how do we ensure that the right things are done if we're not the ones that are personally doing it yeah, so you, you just recited my favorite quote of all time, which is inspect what you expect. Mm. Um, and I think that that holds true for your executive assistant and honestly, your entire team, anybody who reports to you, um, is that you are building relationships with people that work for you and you are you are giving them trust. You are empowering them to do the job. You are making sure there's clarity in every expectation, um, that they are clear um, what it is the company expects of them, what that, what every detail of that looks like, how that shows up to the customer and the client, and what that means for the organization. And then you have, you know, your communication structure that fills all the gap, the gaps in between. So, like for my assistant and I we are in constant communication with each other. Um, and I'm very aware of high level, all the things that are being worked on, what's being accomplished, um, and to what degree in detail those things are being accomplished. And again, that's what gives me peace is I think, you know, um, like any relationship, it's one that grows over time. Uh, as you give people more and more and they show up and prove to you that they can do this better than you thought or better than you could, then you're able to give more mm. and so on and so forth. And I think that goes for your executive assistant as well as any other leader or manager or employee that works for you is that, you know, it's an evolution of. Um, empowerment and trust and delegation. So what you might give to somebody the first three months they work for you should evolve over time. And maybe what they handle for you within a year is threefold mm -hmm. because you've kind of gained that relationship. You've kind of trained, coached and inspected all along the way. And you've been able to give trust into that relationship. Mm. I remember when Shelly and I first started working together the first few weeks, I had cleared about half of my calendar every week to spend time with her, diving deep into everything I cared about, how I work, all of my quirks, all of my 
concerns, uh, key people on the team that I want to make sure that she understands the dynamics of these relationships. There was just so much time, Trisha. Like early on, it was it was literally of half time. of my time, like working through yeah. this is why I care about. And then there was this stage where it was a little bit less time and, and she was actually speaking into, hey, I've noticed uh, you could be a little bit better at this process over here. Do you mind if I pick that up and take care of that for you? And a little test would be, sure take a stab at that. And then she'd come back and it'd be amazing because she's awesome at what she does. And these days, um, we're just, like you said, we're communicating all the time, but I feel like I've, I barely have to spend any time for her to, the ground just moves. Like she shows up and the ground moves and things just start happening. And she wraps around all of my chaos and organizes it and kind of cleans up the mess that I make uh, and, and make sure that everyone on the team and all of our customers are taken care of with excellence. And it's just this amazing thing. But, you know, I want you to say more about constant communication because um, I think there there's this uh, this misnomer that you could just hire somebody and not have to interact with them or communicate with them and they're just going to know what to do they they can somehow magically read your mind Uh, what does your constant communication look like you guys having regular scheduled meetings is it just all throughout the day texting calling slacking is it all of the above how do you ensure that constant communication is there yes yes i major pet peeve and we see it a lot um, at Belay, because we serve so many clients and assistants, is there is this uh, perception that you will start on Monday with a with an assistant, and by Tuesday she's going to know exactly what to do and how to do it, and you're going to feel this great relief all of a sudden, which is totally, <laughs> um, you know, comical to me. It's because like magic diet like, pills. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, w- I mean, if I had that pill in a bottle, I mean, it, where would we be today? But it's just not reality. It's 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 like any person you're going to hire into your organization. There is an intensive training time um, that goes into this role, just like any other role. I mean, just like if you were hiring somebody on your marketing team, I mean, they would go through, mm-hmm. you know, weeks of training and and all the things and it's the same thing for your assistant i you know for me as well when i started with melissa it was a lot um it was a lot uh, and i did even try and scare her at the beginning and say okay so i like to run really fast with my hair on fire and what i need is for you to chase me around and put it out you know like <laughs> that's your job like, that vision, i think you just <laughs> described every entrepreneur <laughs> And your goal is at some point a year from now, I would like you to get ahead of me. Mm. <laughs> because yes. I, we, I, you know, we kind of have this joke that I move so fast, nobody can get ahead of me. Yeah. So that was kind of our really silly goal was, could she ever get ahead of me where she was actually looking at something in my future that I haven't even started to think about yet. And I I am happy to say that we actually are to that point. She did a really good job. She took it as a personal challenge Mm. that she was gonna come in here and as fast as she could get ahead of me because she knew that's that's really what I wanted at the end of the day. So um, back to the time, Um, there was no way she was gonna be able to read my mind um, there's no way even today, even though we've worked together for a couple of years, that she could still read my mind. Actually, if mind reading was a thing, we'd all be um, in a different place right now, too. But the reality of it is, is that we even continue to change as leaders and our priorities change over time as our roles change and as our businesses evolve. Mm-hmm. So the assistant I even needed six months ago is different than the assistant I need today. Uh, And she has grown and morphed and changed what she does for me as my role has changed and my needs have changed. So I think there's a lot of fluidity when it comes to what your executive assistant can do for you. It's constantly evolving. It's not stagnant at all. There are certainly things that she does that are on repeat, like calendar management, Mm -hmm. email, and some of those generic things. But there's so much in between that's constantly changing. And in order for her to be able to keep up with all of that, we have to be in pretty consistent communication. I think to your point, I actually don't have to think very hard about it because we've built that relational capital. She actually knows what I like. She knows my preferences. She knows how I communicate. She knows how I think so she can be proactive. Um, but it still takes a lot of checking in throughout the week. Mm -hmm. So we have a set Monday morning 
um, one-on-one meeting. We are a remote organization. So our meeting is actually on Zoom every Monday morning. And I think it speaks to how I place her as a priority for me um, as a leader of an organization is she is the first person I meet every Monday morning. Mm, I love that. That meeting sets the tone for my entire week. That After sends a that, big, that's a big message yes. you're sending to her. Like this is my number yes. one is you to check in so with you. Pro- yes, you are so important. And I want to give you um, everything you need so that you can have a successful week this week. And you can manage your priorities and I can help you do that because in turn, everything you're doing is supporting me anyway. Mm. So she's first on my list. I mean, before I meet with, before we have staffing meetings and even before I'm meeting with other officers of the company, because that, that time I spend with her is, is crucial for the success of both of our weeks, honestly. Mm. I'd love to talk more about this idea of somebody getting out ahead of you. I've worked with assistants in the past who were, pretty competent at if I gave them a specific task, they would go do the task and then come back and kind of say, okay, what do you want me to do now? And it wasn't bad, you know, and and they they would go and next task. And then I would go, okay, well, if you could work on this now, but I felt like I was constantly having to think about all the things that needed to happen to keep them busy. It contrasts that with what you're describing where somebody is, you know, they're in sync with you and they're making sure that they're aligned on your objectives, but as you said, they're out in front of you. They're anticipating things. They're solving problems that you didn't even see coming before they got to you. And, you know, what are you looking for when you're hiring somebody like that? How, what's what's the difference between the person who's just going to kind of do what you asked for and, and do it well, but they're waiting on you versus somebody who's actually anticipating? What's the Are there certain character traits, certain questions you're asking in the interview process? What is that X factor thing of somebody that's going to grow with you and stay out in front of you? That is an awesome question, Daniel. So um, we've been through a lot of assistance and I've been through a few myself and I've been in the place where um, they do good work. But to your point, delegating um, is something I have to think about because they're not proactive. Mm-hmm. So proactivity um, is really we see that show up in a couple different ways and different people for, um, you know, first and foremost, it's really that um, this person it really has a vision for uh, the future and really has the ability to see ahead um, and is not stuck in the day to day and can see the ripple effects of what's coming out in front of them. I mean, it, it, it's almost as if your executive assistant has, dare I say, I mean, their leadership skills, right. if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like she leads me. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for skills that I would look in for, for a leader, you know, the, the proactivity, the flexibility, the getting it, the goal oriented, the hungry person. So, um, complacency gets you to a, to a place where you're just handling what you need to. Um, and we're looking for people who are looking to, um, looking to succeed who are goal oriented and have something in the future that they're they're driving towards Mm. um and so i know it's a generic word but we find that the best executive assistants are actually very um driven personality Mm. types so they're really drivers which is not something maybe you would necessarily think of if you were going to describe the type of executive assistant you would work for you might necessarily you might not put the words, you know, they're, they're driver and they're hungry and they're goal mm-hmm. oriented in that description. But the truth is that's actually what's going to get you ahead. Um, if you start, if you use words like I want them to, you know, um, serve me well and be, you know, kind and thoughtful and in the details, those are all great things you want as well. But those might be the details that keep you um, in today and not get you right. ahead That's and right. forward. It's like if that was all they were doing, you're, you're missing that driver piece. I love that you're saying that because yeah. the best executive assistants around our building, uh, they have that that tenacity and that drive and that that push, but it's blended with this amazing humility where they, they do have the heart of a servant because they want to make their leader shine and, and they're comfortable being yes. behind the scenes. They're not necessarily driving to hog more of the spotlight. They're driving to say, 
I am not going to wait to sit around and see what I'm told to do. I'm going to make sure that we're moving things forward and they see their number one client as that leader and making them successful. But I, I love this concept of they're leading us, you know, like as a leader, we're leading the whole team, but a great executive assistant really does lead their leader. And uh, my assistant, Shelly, yes. for sure is better at managing yes. me than I'm, than I am at managing myself. She knows me. And that's, <laughs> uh, she, in fact, just this morning, as I was coming in and prepping for this conversation, I walk in and just boom, she pops in my office. Hey, you got everything you need. Hey, here's the notes. Here's boom, 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 boom. I'm like, you're amazing. You know, you're thinking about what is, what is Daniel working on right now? And what could he be stressed about? What does he need to be ready for? What are the reminders? She walked me through my day in about three minutes. And hey, just remind you have this today. Also, you email me this thing. Do you want me to print that out? Do you want me to email it back to you? So you have a top of your inbox. I mean, she's just anticipating all the time. And it's yes. this amazing thing where I go, I feel like I'm cheating. I, f- I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting to, to drive with the, uh, you know, the autopilot is just taking me down the road all the time. And I'm still responsible to drive that car. But I, but I have this extra set of skills that, uh, don't exist inside of me, but this this other person's coming along uh, with those things, and we're we're better as a unit. And so that drive oh, yes. is, uh, I think it's really key what you're saying that they have that drive. How, how do you find that and person? Accountability. That, mm, yeah. Say I mean, more about that. Holding, yeah, holding us accountable. You know, um, she holds me accountable for the things she knows that I say I shouldn't be doing or should be doing. So um, she will be the first one to slap my wrist. <laughs> if I put my hands on something that I should not have my hands on. Mm. You know, she will text me and say, "I see you in this spreadsheet. You have no business being in a spreadsheet." You know, <laughs> That's there. good. Or uh, when she catches me not leveraging her when, mm. for things that she knows she should do and can do very well, um, she she's the first one to say to me, "Mm." Yeah. You have bigger fish to fry. Stop stop getting tangled in this minutia and get out of here. What can I do for you? You know, she she call me out very quickly. And that's, that's actually what I want her to do. You know, when I was hiring her, I, first I tried to scare her. I told her I was going to run out, I was running around with my hair on fire and I wanted her to get ahead of me. But I also told her that I wanted her to absolutely hold me accountable mm. and that uh you know, I am not the boss of her. Um that she's in charge of me. <laughs> so um she she absolutely uh runs my show. Yeah, I want you to say more about this because I I think we have to really communicate as leaders in a way that that makes it safe for our team to do that because there's a power differential and sure. the typical environment is whatever the boss is doing, they must have a reason, leave them alone and let them do what they want to do. I don't understand it. They kind of internally yeah. roll their eyes and go, I shouldn't be doing that. But then they never tell the boss because, well, they're the boss, right? right. And I think we really have to work if we're the leader to disarm mm-hmm. and make sure that one, that it's safe and we, we expect them to give us that feedback. And then two, when they do give us that feedback, how we respond says everything about whether we really want it or not. So how do you have those conversations in a way that gets her to actually slap your hand and feel like it's safe to do that? And it's not an insubordinate act. It's an actual way of serving you, but she has to push on you a little bit and hold you accountable. That can be like a foreign concept for people. How do I hold my boss accountable? But as leaders, how do, how do we help them feel like it's safe to do so? Yeah, th- that's such a fascinating concept for sure. I um, it, it takes a lot of work, honestly. You know, w- that's actually something we have to bring to the table as the leader and set the tone for. Is you know, I I really have to frequently say, um, you know, what feedback do you have for me? I have to be palms up. I have to be very mindful of not reacting in a negative way to deter her from ever having feedback again, and I have to constantly ask the question like weekly, you know, okay, what, what do you need me to do and not do? Mm. And we talk a lot about feedback in general between her and I, and actually just as a team is that um, really good feedback actually is just great communication and conversations day to day. So you actually can avoid having the notorious feedback conversation, right? So Mm. my, my way to avoid having a feedback conversation is by just having really great communication in the day to day. Mm -hmm. And that's a two way street. So um, that's me saying, Hey, great job on the spreadsheet. You know, I like blue versus green, you know, and and it's, it's not a thing or, you know, just giving um, small critical chunks of adjustments, if you will, Mm -hmm. um, 
so that we make micro progress all along the yeah. way and that every day is better yeah. than the day before because we made we made small tweaks together and so we never got to the place where there's a conversation like hey three weeks ago in a meeting you did this thing and it really upset me mm. and then she's on the other side going three weeks ago in a meeting what right. why are we right. talking about this now so well um, and then if she's going okay if that was three weeks ago and you've been thinking negatively about that what are you always thinking about that i don't know that's a problem right. and we're not talking about it and it just creates this kind of almost like living in fear all the time if that's all bottled up yeah so i'm i'm a huge fan of you know constantly <laughs> My poor team, right? But constantly <laughs> saying what's on my mind. Yeah. Okay, my team, my spouse, my children. <laughs> but um, but I'm going to say know, if they if you're I, not having I, those conversations, it's not my poor team. I mean, l lucky them because there's so many leaders I, I leaders. think that need to hear this message, Tricia, and that is you've got to communicate all the time. You have to let people all know what's on your mind, and even if what's on your mind isn't totally uh, on point, you know, you got to you got to reserve the right to go. Hey, I might not even be right about this. It's just what I'm feeling right yeah. now, and it's okay for you to push back on me and I was in a board meeting yesterday with uh, Dave and our entire board and Dave was saying some things very adamantly. Can you imagine Dave Ramsey saying things adamantly? No, not at all. <laughs> and there were several people going, no, I don't agree. I don't think so. I, you need to chill out a second. I need to say how I feel about this. And mm -hmm. But Dave invites that type of environment. He doesn't expect everybody just wholesale to buy in because he's the boss. He expects he expects us to be able to wrestle through and have a conversation. I think that's how the best teams are really built and, yeah, and that culture I of healthy conflict and mm -hmm. feedback being a regular thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I tell my team all the time and I tell my assistant as well. Um, th these people, you are hired to actually have an opinion and have a voice. Mm -hmm. If I surround myself with a bunch of yes men who are just going to say, yes, boss, yes, boss, yes, boss. I tell you right now, we're going to be out of business. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to have this enormous ego and we're going to be nowhere. <laughs> so oh, so good. Like, this isn't about my ego. This is about you actually have been hired to do this job because you're better at it than I am. Yes. My my executive assistant is better than me at all the things she handles. Calendar, social media organization, um, planning and prepping and logistics like that is her jam. She's better than me at those things. And and all of the directors and leaders that work for me, they're there because they're better at something than I am. And I actually need that to show up. I, I don't need yes, man. I actually get yeah. annoyed if someone does not have an opinion about something in a conversation. Right. I'm like, what do you have to say about that? Can you please contribute to this? Yes. You know, agree, disagree, contrarian. Um, so we, I love we the idea of explicitly saying you have an opinion, you have a voice, and we expect that. And and to the it's, degree, it's, it's almost like if you're not doing that, you're not doing your job. And it, you make I, it. And a, that's absolutely it. Yes, you are. You are expected to contribute mm, to the conversation. That's good. You know, what do you say to leaders who have maybe had a bad experience with delegation? I can think about uh, I, I had several assistants that um, I didn't train them well or I didn't pick the right person. And in those experiences, I, I remember traveling one time and thinking that everybody was uh, taken care of on the team and had their travel information and flights booked. And I just show up to the airport and I get to the airport and I come up to check in and um, the, the flight was booked, but it was the wrong time. And so I'm there four hours late and I'm going, you've got to be kidding. Like, this is so basic. And I had this feeling, Trisha, I'm never going to trust this to anyone else mm -hmm. again. Okay. Because I'm, I missed my flight and now I got to scramble. Now I'm stressed. And now the, the other end of the trip, we're supposed to see a client get out there in time and I'm embarrassed. And I just, I had all this, this fear that, that really welled up at that point of, I, I don't know if it's safe to delegate thing. Like there's certain things I need to hold on to, to make sure that they're done right. And we've been talking this whole time about they're better at it than you are. So clearly this person in that case, wasn't better at it, or I didn't train them well, or they didn't, they never booked travel before. I don't know what the thing was, but you know, the point is, I think we have to be okay with some failures and, and continuing to iterate towards this perfect relationship that we're describing. And it's never perfect, but this this harmony where we actually have peace all the time, because I didn't have peace. I mean, earlier you talked about right, your assistant yes. gives you peace. I did not have peace. And I, I think there's a lot of leaders who have had an experience that they go, I don't have peace with delegating. What do you say to them about taking some risks and trying it and, and continuing to lean into figuring out how to delegate and, and get to that sweet spot where you do have peace all the time? 
Yeah, it, it is absolutely a process and um, we're going to mess it up. I mean, I, um, I, I, I'm the CEO of an organization whose job it is to figure out how people can delegate. Mm. Yes, it, yet it is something that I am continually sharpening my skill on. Uh, so yeah. it really is an evolution. It's like you never really arrive um, at figuring out how to be the best delegator. However, I think to your point, the first thing you can do is set the relationship up for success in the beginning by investing the time necessary to do the training and the preference checking. Um, and I think preferences might sometimes be the, the soft skills that we forget to talk about or we think are not relevant. So soft skills, you know, for me are like, hey, um, please don't email me after 4 p.m. because I'm trying to wrap up my day and I'm not going to, you know, handle it. So maybe that's a soft skill. Um, or it's like, um, I expect you to respond to me um, within X amount of time frame. Mm. So it's it's the things that are um, the, the soft and fuzzy, maybe immeasurable yeah. things that sometimes people forget to talk about when they're onboarding people, mm. um, especially somebody who will work with you so closely. I mean, your executive assistant will probably work with you closer than anybody else on your team, Mm. honestly. Yes. Um, So they need to know all the intimate pet peeves, preferences, details, and kind of arming them with all of that information in detail in the beginning, I think will set the tone for Mm -hmm. good things to come. Um, But then you're constantly building on that over time um, and building that relationship. by, by making sure that they understand your preferences. And, and here's the other thing about people. Uh, we're not perfect. A lot of the times we screw up. Uh-huh. I mean, I like to tell people, you know, 50%, if something, if something missed an expectation, it is likely 50% your fault. Uh-huh. <laughs> did you, you, Great. did you forget a layer yes. of detail? Did you forget to ask a question? Mm. Did you not inspect what you expected? Or the vision so, was never clear to begin with, right? Right. It, like the objective you, wasn't you, defined. You, you didn't, you didn't give all the information, yeah. you know, um, to the other person. So they made their best decision based on the limited information they have. So I, I do kind of say, you know, um, really go back and look at those instances and say, you know, what, were there gaps on my side? Are there training gaps on their side? Um, and, and it's okay that we fail. People will mess up. Mm. So I have a story. Um, I used to be, I was a virtual assistant um, years ago as well. And I worked for a leader um, who was um, a high profile leader mm. who was going on a book tour and they were doing 100 press PR interviews in a month for this book tour. And I was the virtual assistant and I was scheduling all of these 100 interviews for this executive. Mm. And I'll tell you what, Daniel, I messed up three of them. Wrong time zone, mm. wrong link, wrong phone number. Right? <laughs> and I could not feel more awful um, because I, I had messed that up for my leader. Mm. Um, here's the beauty of that story is I immediately went to my leader and apologized, hey, I've totally screwed this up. I own this. Um, I will do everything I can to fix it. I will reschedule it. So um, I think, you know, as an assistant, owning your mistakes Mm. and and professing to make them right as quickly as possible is important. But in return, what that leader said to me was, my boss at the time, he said, hey, that's three out of 100. You get a 97. I'm pretty sure that's still an A. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So we have to remember, like, it's never going to be perfect. No, it's never going to be perfect. And, yeah. and where we learn those those tough life lessons is through some of those non-fatal mistakes. We make mistakes and we go, we have those moments where we go, never again. Okay, I'm going to make sure next time. Yes. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. Um, you know, I, I think it's key that we we call out this idea that as leaders, really just as humans in general, um, we're fickle. We have a lot of nuance. We have a lot of things that we prefer and uh, they're weird. They're unique to us. And I think the the misnomer is we assume everyone else has those same preferences. And so surely they would just do it this way too. Right. And I know for me as a leader, I'm even inconsistent with what I prefer given 
what Same. day is it and my energy <laughs> levels and what's going on at home and you know and so to try to put it all into this workflow that if this then that every time no matter what uh, I'm not an algorithm I'm a human I have emotions I have moods I have different things that I'm excited mm-hmm. about at different times and so all of that communication with our assistants you know one of the things that Shelly and I talk about a lot she'll ask me how's your energy how's your energy where's your head at and and what that is is it, it's a bid for her to say Hey, do you really care about what you said you cared about a month ago? Because I'm checking in because I know it can be a moving target. And I may go, well, right now my head is stuck on this thing and this issue and this problem. And I vent about how I feel like I don't have any time and I'm not going to be able to get it done. She go, okay, I know what you said your priorities were a week ago, but I can tell what your actual priorities right now because of where your head is at, what what you're focused on. And so I think that communication about all of our our humanness and and how much we're emotional and moving around to different things based on the evolving landscape of our businesses. It's so key to invite our assistants into that discussion. Um, They're the one person that I think we really have to completely take our mask off all the way and go, look, I got in a fight with my spouse this morning. I'm having issues with my kid. I, I'm, I'm supposed to be game on in this meeting, but my head's not even in the game right now. You just need to know that. And then magically they can start shifting things around on your calendar. They can bring you a cup mm-hmm. of coffee. I mean, whatever they, they can go. All right. I see you. I see where you're at mm-hmm. now. Then how can I help you perform today at your best? Given what showed up in your inbox this morning or given this unexpected surprise that we're dealing with all the time as leaders. Trisha, we're, we're yes. always dealing with surprises yes. and things that are unexpected. So every day is a new day. I mean, my assistant would say that's part of what she actually enjoys about her job is it's 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 not repetitive and redundant. Mm. Every day is a new challenge. Every every week is a new opportunity. It's constantly evolving and changing. And to your point, so am I. And so is the work. And it, it keeps her actually very challenged. There is no status quo mm. being a great executive assistant to her leader. Um, they, they're going along this journey with you. Yeah. I want you to, for the leaders who are still thinking about, maybe I need an assistant, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, Every leader needs an assistant. Let's talk about this. I agree. Uh, (laughs) Every leader. (laughs) It can feel like it's not worth the investment of money. It can feel bougie. It can feel like, well, I don't really just need a secretary. Uh, It can also feel like I'm not sure I can. I mean, we've, we've hit on all these objections of why you wouldn't have an assistant. But in the opening part of the conversation, you said that your assistant 10x is your capacity. And I think when a leader really understands their role and their ability to build and grow a peak performing business, if the biggest asset of a leader is their time, then any time spent doing something that someone else can do, they're actually stealing from the opportunity of the organization. They're stealing from their team. Break this down for leaders who are going, okay, I'm hearing this. I think I probably need to get an assistant, but I'm, I'm still just, I need to be convinced this is the wise thing to do. Yeah, so I um, I had my first assistant when I was a director, and she worked for me for 10 hours a week. And my boss, Brian Miles, the owner of Belay, insisted that I have an assistant. Same thing. I was like, oh, I think I'm good. I think I can do all the things. Um, he says, no, I want you to have this because I'm going to need you to continually do more hmm. and grow. And I can't keep giving you more, and you won't grow if you don't let go. And that honestly is the truth for every leader. So I probably had an assistant long before the average person might have an assistant. I was not an executive by any means. Um, I was kind of down in rank in the organization. And um, honestly, it was the biggest gift. I mean, I learned really early on the value of my time and that really my job was, no matter what seat you sit in an organization, whether you're at the top, middle management, or or anywhere else, Mm. that the job if you're working through a thriving, growing organization, what you need to do tomorrow should be greater than what you're doing today. Mm. And you're not going to be able to do more, take on more, look ahead and figure that out if you don't have more capacity. Yeah. So making sure that you are available and free to professionally develop and take on additional, even if it's it's not something physically you're doing, but it's your thinking, your brain, your mm-hmm. mind, your time that you're processing or brainstorming or um, working through hard decisions for organizations, for your organization, whether it's 
um, you know, product line issues or client issues or new ser- new services or sales strategies, um, whatever those things are, there there is if you expect your company to grow and you want to grow with it, you have got to be available to be better tomorrow than you are today. Yeah. You're not going to be better tomorrow than you are today if you are bogged down scheduling right. calendar and booking travel and taking care of email and worrying about social media posts and whatever that is. You you really want to free yourself yes. up before that all is going to come to you. So it was always my job is always to figure out how to delegate more so that I had more capacity so that my leader could give me mm-hmm. more. And so the more free and available my time was, the more my leader delegated to me. And then I was ah, able to kind of yes. rise through the organization. Gotcha. So how I, be- how I went from in- at Belay, starting at the bottom and now sitting as CEO is because I really made sure that I was open, free and available to do the bigger things mm-hmm. by delegating the smaller things. I love it. Well, it sounds like you're saying you have to have the time available to step into the next opportunity, even before you're clear on exactly what the next opportunity is. And uh, as business owners, you know, if we're if we're growing our business, healthy things grow, growing things change. There's going to be more opportunity that you as the leader need to come attack the new opportunity with all that you've got and all your mental horsepower and all your ingenuity. But if you're bogged down with everything, that opportunity comes and you go, I don't have the capacity to go see that opportunity it'll pass you by and uh yeah because then you get stuck in the oh god you know you you mm. find yourself if you're already overwhelmed and your plate's already full and some great opportunity has just fallen in your lap you know your first reaction might be oh gosh how am i going to do this right. i don't have the time right versus being wow this is awesome i'm going to charge at mm. this because you actually feel free and unburdened yes to do those things yeah I love it. Tricia, um, there can be a stigma about what an assistant is. And uh, I've talked to certain people who are like, yeah, I don't don't need a secretary. You know, I got kind of, if you think of uh, Mad Men and the, you know, the Mm. classic 1960s, they bring your coffee and they file things and they take your calls and leave you notes of who called when and Oh, welcome back from lunch, sir. It's just very white, mm-hmm. male, old school. Sec- <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about somebody yes. who is your business partner, team member, somebody that's really in it with you. But what are the tasks and activities and, and projects that a really great assistant does that's way beyond going and, and getting coffee? I mean, because we're, we're I mean, they may be doing some of those things occasionally, but that's not the job description that we're talking about. No, not at all. And if you're me and we work remote, she can't bring me coffee. So. <laughs> she can order I mean, it to be delivered. Maybe. To my head. She could. She yeah. could totally order coffee delivery, but that's not on the priority list. Yeah. So I think I think it's exactly your point is that this this person has to be such a trusted partner for you because you really want them. It's, it's like you said, Daniel, you want them to be able to intimately know you and what you need at every layer through every mood. There'll be so much personal investment that goes into this relationship and they will know you personally. Mm. I mean, a lot of what my assistant does for me is personal family vacation planning, scheduling doctor's appointments, dentist appointments. I mean, there are things that she does for me as a whole person, not just as work, Trisha. Um, You know, we aren't always just our work selves. Mm. We are whole people. And so really the, um, you know, my assistant knows so much about me more than anybody else that honestly I work for because she is supporting a person and it's not just about the work that she does. Now, as far as the work that she does, it's constantly evolving, um, like I've kind of said, but there are the basics that, you know, support any leader. Thing, you know, the calendar management, she helps me with some of my, triaging some of my email and booking my travel. Um, a lot of meeting logistics planning, like, you know, yeah. Zoom links and location booking and having lunch brought in and all of those things for sure. Um, but it's a lot of the miscellaneous one-offs that happen in any given week, like, oh, this opportunity came up and now you're going to be at this event. And her being able to, instead of me worrying about how am I gonna be at this event? I have these other things planned. I mean, she is just gonna swoop in, Mm. make it happen. Again, being 
being that she's giving me peace of mind. Make it happen, adjust schedules, and and be the eyes and the ears that I, I actually don't want to be. Like, I don't want to stress out about what my calendar looks like and that these two meetings are overlapping with each other and people are requesting yeah. my time that I don't have. And um, she really can set priorities for me um, and guide my my time for me. And then I'm able to leverage her in so many miscellaneous ways, um, you know, one thing, right, I've mentioned a couple of times is, you know, she helps a lot with my social media and LinkedIn connections mm -hmm. and um, board meeting prep and notes and follow ups. I, you know, the, the latest thing I've have her working on for me, which has been such a tremendous help is, you know, she's my follow upper. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> go I will chase step them out down. Of a meeting. Yes. yes, I'll step out of a meeting and there's a list of like 14 things that somebody is going to do and usually it's not me right, yeah, right. So somebody on the team is going to go do these this thing and this person's going to do this thing and so it is it is awesome mm. to say to my assistant here's the 14 action items that came out of this meeting um and who they're assigned to let me know when they're all done yeah <laughs> right so um now she's helping me inspect what i expect that's which great is, We've gotten to the place and that's a gift. That's a beautiful thing. The, the eyes and ears. You know, Trisha, um, how, do you, how do you get your friends and family used to the fact that you have an assistant and it's not weird? If, if my best friend texts me and says, you want to grab lunch and my best friend gets a text back from me, uh, I'll have my assistant reach out to you. They may <laughs> be going, come on, bro. What? Really? <laughs> you know, and yet... All of yeah. my calendar and all of my time runs through my assistant because we have a rule. Daniel doesn't touch his calendar because when he does, he breaks it. He messes and, it up. And <laughs> uh, it, can, it can feel funny for people. I mean, my, my wife and my assistant and I, we all communicate a lot together and even personal things are scheduled and my assistant will put those mm -hmm. on the calendar. Um, but we have to be careful that we don't alienate our closest relationships and all of a sudden the gatekeeper that's supposed to be keeping the noise out of our lives all of a sudden people are experiencing that person in a way that they're like, what, who are you? I can't even have a relationship with you. And it's transactional now because I'm having to talk to your gatekeeper. Yeah, that, that is real life. Actually. I, I had this conversation very recently with a dear friend of mine, Megan Hyatt uh, over at Michael Hyatt and company. Oh, yeah. um, we talked a lot. We, we talk about as women um, and it goes for anybody, right. You know, when, and when it's not appropriate to bring your assistant into some of those personal things. And we were sharing a story about um, her assistant working with um one, you know, scheduling something with one of the teachers at the school. And so now, the, you know, is the school now going to have this, you know, perceived notion about something because, mm. you know, your, you know, air quote assistant is scheduling for you. So I, I think there, it, a lot of it is, is preference. So for me, one of the things I do to avoid some of that awkwardness is I have pre open blocks of time on my ideal work week. Um, Cause I keep a pretty maniacally locked down calendar of when mm. I'm going to do what I'm going to do and when I'm not doing anything. Um, I have blocks of time when I will and can do personal things and lunches. So like every Friday afternoon is my I'm open for lunch spot. Mm. And then I have a, a Thursday afternoon, um, other spot, you know, coffee date spot as well. So I kind of reserve time. So when those personal things come up, I actually don't lean into my assistant. Yeah. You can just I say I'm free on Friday. Yeah. yeah. I already know. She knows. Keep it open so that if I personally commit to something, it's, it's available for yeah. me. So, like th you know, there's, there's that ability as well, you know, to, to leverage them as much as you want or That's not, good. depending on how comfortable you are and who you're dealing with. I think some people wouldn't care, but the ones that do, mm, you can leave them out of it. Yeah. Oh, you got to be smart about it. Well, you know, Trisha, a lot yeah. of business owners out there having a really challenging year this year, trying to figure out how they get above it, how they work on the business, not in it, how they scale in the midst of all the disruption that's been taking place 
in the market. As we close up here, and, and you're working with uh, hundreds and thousands of business leaders every day uh, with what you guys do at Belay, um, what are you seeing about you know the leaders who are winning right now, and uh, how would you take what you're seeing and encourage all the men and women listening to this today who are, maybe they're low on hope, maybe they're low on optimism. What would you tell them about the future of business and um, what you believe would be a little bit of wind in their sails as we wrap up today? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it has definitely, 2020 has been a year for sure for everybody, but I, I, um, we have seen so many organizations, especially small business, who is who we primarily work with, thrive and survive, honestly. We have seen so many leaders and executives really um, dig their heels in, um, get creative, pivot the word of the year, um, and and make it happen. I'm so encouraged by what we're seeing here at Belay, by the leaders um, who have really um, just done all they can do to get on the other side. We have seen actually an influx of people come to us and say, um, I, I, I'm not going to survive if I do this all alone. Mm. Um, I'm ready to build a team. I need people around me to make this happen. Um, so we have seen more and more people really recognize that um, teams go further um, together and people have really invested in their people. And we've also seen, um, you know, we've also had an amazing opportunity to um, provide great work for all the many people out there who are looking for work right now. Mm. Um, and what everything is telling us from what we see is that we're gonna get on the other side of it and, and this will be a season and at some point, we will look back and know it was hard, but be proud we got on the other side of it. So what I say is keep looking forward. The future is very bright. Tomorrow will be better than today. We just have to have a lot of patience, which which is ironic for me to say because I'm the least patient person. I am. But <laughs> I do believe. <laughs> I believe the economy is it will come back. It we is going a virtue. To be all right. I've heard. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> patience. We can um, all it's use coming. <laughs> We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Uh, well, very encouraging. Uh, she is Trisha Shortino. And uh, one of the premier voices in this country, I believe, on delegating specifically when it comes to working with an assistant. They work with thousands of leaders and pair them with assistants who can help them do everything we've been talking about on this podcast today. Guys, you've got to value your time. Your time is your company's biggest asset if you're the owner, if you're the leader. And so we really want to encourage you to lean into this idea of having an assistant that you can work closely with so that you can scale up. Trisha, leaders that want to know more about how to do that what do you tell them how they can get more information about what you guys are doing and learn a little bit more yes it's very simple you should visit us at belaysolutions.com there'll be tons of information about our virtual assistance and if you want to talk to somebody we'll be available to chat with you as well love it trisha always a joy to speak with you thank you for what you guys are doing to help business owners win and that's what we're doing here and it's great to have a partnership with you guys as we lock arms together and advance entrepreneurship and small business in this country thank you so much for what you guys do thanks for your time today thank you thanks for having me proud to be part of this and cut and i think we're doing another little uh add something Hi. Sure. Okay. Okay. You know, I was just thinking if, if we go all the way back to mine and Trisha's first interaction, this was like, Oh, that was like what? 12. I mean, you're working for Mike at the time, right? 
Is that when we met? I was. I was probably the first time I got an email from you. It was not a belay email through address. Through Mike. It was a well, Mike. That's, he, <laughs> <laughs> that's that is when we met, and we met at a restaurant in Franklin. That's right. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> and about you were that. with your wife. I think so. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> uh, lots of history. Well. Um, yes. Yeah, I think I'll just uh, let me get my head around how we frame this. So. Here with Trisha, friends, same purpose. Okay, let's just try it. And then if we, if we hate it, okay. Well, guys, for many years now, I've had an incredible relationship and what has become uh, just a really joyful friendship with my friends at Belay Solutions. Brian and Shannon Miles are the founders of Belay, and we first met when they came to an Entree Leadership event many, many years ago. And um, they plugged into this stuff, and they believe so much in Entree Leadership. They believe in small business. They were a very small business at the time, very, very small. And today, uh, they're massive. They built something that's truly special. And I'm on here today with their CEO, Trisha, uh, I always mess up your last name. (laughs) You had it. You had it. Let's do a pickup. I'm on today with their CEO, Trisha Shortino. I can't start. (laughs) (laughs) Got it. How long did it take you you when you got married to say it all? Because it's the Trisha (laughs) and then the Shortino. It's the Shortino. I still mess it up. It's my name. I'm glad to know that. (laughs) Let's pick that up one more time. And I'm on today with their CEO, Trisha Shortino. Trisha, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Hey, Daniel. So good to see you and be with you today. Well, I want you to describe what you guys do. You're helping small business owners everywhere, which we're extremely passionate about. Tell us how specifically you're helping leaders. Yes, Belay, Belay's mission is to serve the small business owner and leader by um, helping you focus on only what you can do by Okay, let's let me start over as well. How about that, Daniel? Okay, we're gonna pick that one up. Tell us specifically how you guys are helping small business owners win. So Belay is a virtual staffing organization and we provide virtual assistance and actually bookkeeping, web services, and social media strategists to small business owners so that they can do what only they can do and they can get out of the weeds and minutia and really focus on growing their business. Mm. Well, you know, Trisha, we talk about all the time, this idea of delegation is so important for leaders because the biggest asset that a business owner has is their time. And many times as business owners uh, getting started out, our time is going all over the place. It's fragmented. Uh, We're making messes. We're cleaning them up. There's a lot of energy, uh, but we're just running on this treadmill and working, working, working. And sometimes it feels like we're not making any traction. How does a executive assistant, virtual assistant that you guys have actually free up a leader to empower them to work on the business more and not just in it? Yeah, I think first of all, knowing that you should not be doing all the things and recognizing that sometimes you need to get out of your own way, that you need a team, you need somebody to come alongside you and help you lift an organization into growth um, and acceleration, that you should really be focused on um, the high ticket ROI items for your organization, which are the things that you were born and meant to do for your team is where you need to spend your time. And by offloading and really using an executive assistant, it will help accelerate you in your organization tenfold. Mm, I love it. Well, guys, I, you should know that Dave Ramsey himself has an incredible executive assistant. Every one of our leaders at Ramsey Solution has an executive assistant that we work with. We believe in this so much. And uh, Belay is a great way to get started into this idea of having an assistant that you work with, um, whether it's starting out at five hours a week or somebody at a full time, uh, they're all in 40 hours a week partnering with you as a leader. I highly encourage you to check these guys out and what they're doing. They can be an incredible asset for you. Uh, Trisha, how can people learn more? Yes, visit us at belaysolutions.com. We are here to help and help you figure out how an executive assistant can serve you and your organization. I love it. You heard it, guys. Go to belaysolutions.com to learn how you can get somebody that's going to be your right arm and help you scale this thing to the next level. Trisha, thanks for being on today. Thanks, Daniel.
How do we do? <laughs> <laughs> what? That wasn't 90 seconds? <laughs> Towards the end. Okay. 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 Well, I think I'll also just ask a two-part question that you can answer the, I think it's, uh, let's start, let's start with why a business owner's time is their biggest asset. Let's make the case for why. And then the, so the solution we provide is we offer virtual assistant services for leaders. Um, and I'll just let you do that all in one answer okay. instead of coming back around with another follow-up question. I think that'll okay. tighten it up quite a bit. How's that feel? Okay. Feels good. Okay. Let me try it. Uh, da, da, da. Your last opener was so good. It was amazing. I don't know why they're making so us good. redo this. The guys in the booth. I got opinions. Both guys. Opinions. All right, here we go. Guys, for many years, I've been friends with Belay Solutions and the founders, Brian and Shannon Miles, were clients at Entree Leadership many, many years ago. They came to a live event and they were a very small business at the time. And today they have plugged into the stuff and grown and scaled to uh, just an incredible, massive organization. And they're helping business owners win just like we are. And uh, I'm on today with their CEO, Trisha Shortino. Trisha, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Daniel. I want you to talk about why business owners tend to get bogged down and spending their time on the wrong things. You know, we believe that your biggest asset in business is your time and you got to spend it doing things that only you can do. So talk about why is it so important for leaders to delegate to an assistant and what do you guys offer that helps them out with this? Yeah, I think as entrepreneurs and leaders, we think we should do it all. We have this, you know, we we have something sitting on our shoulders or on our chest that we should be able to do all the things. When in actuality, by doing all the things, we're limiting what we can do with greatness. Mm. So really staying focused on those high ticket ROI items is, is the sweet spot of any entrepreneur or business owner. And in order to do that, you really need to be able to delegate. And delegation can start with an excellent virtual assistant, which is what Belay provides. We are a staffing organization that provides fractional executive assistant support to leaders and small business owners so they can really focus on only the things that they can do. I love it. Well, guys, we've had hundreds of Entree Leadership clients tell us that uh, their experience with Belay and getting partnered with a virtual assistant has just been incredible. Uh, what it's done for their time and for their business is they've been able to scale it to the next level. It's just a huge asset uh, that you need to have in your toolbox. So, Trisha, how can people find out more in, in getting started with a Belay assistant? Yes. So visit us at belaysolutions.com and we will be here to answer all your questions. We have lots of information on how you can use an assistant and how we can get you started. I love it. Thanks, Trisha. Thanks. He said we're perfect. <laughs> except here comes the except. except but... <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we would, I think we're fine with just the URL, to be honest. What is, are you concerned about attribution and, and knowing where your leads came from as far as this being the source of? I, I'm not, okay. I wouldn't say to this micro level. I All right. We're okay. I mean, you're paying us a lot of money. I want to make sure you know that. It's <laughs> your prerogative. <laughs> That is a true story. As long as we're happy with how everything's going, I just want to make sure. So we let them pick their lead source. They're going to tell us it was here. Okay. So don't you worry. All right. So we want to do a safety on that. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Okay. 
Guys, for many years, I've been friends with the leaders of Belay Solutions. The founders, Brian and Shannon Miles, are entree leaders themselves. They came to an entree leadership event many, many years ago when they were a very small company. And today, they have a thriving enterprise. They're a peak performing business. And I'm, uh, well, I'm honored to be on the phone today with their CEO, Trisha Shortino. Trisha, thanks for being with us. Hey, good to see you, Daniel. So many leaders, um, you know, they realize they should be delegating more and spending more time working on the business, not just in the business. Uh, we believe that the biggest asset a business owner has is their time and how they spend that time matters a lot to the success of the business. So uh, talk about this idea of delegating to an assistant and and how that can really free up a leader to work on the business and do what they need to do. And, and then how you guys provide solutions for this uh, with Belay. Yes. So we see so many leaders really think that they need to be able to do it all. And the truth is, just like you said, Daniel, um, you can't do it all, nor should you. Um, you're really limiting your capacity by trying to do all the things. So we really do promote uh, the concept of delegation. And the first great place to start is by finding yourself an amazing executive assistant, which is what Belay Solutions does. So we provide virtual staffing solutions for leaders in small businesses. We provide executive executive assistant so leaders can be freed up to do the things that only they can do. Hmm, I love it. Well, guys, we've had hundreds of entree leaders just like you guys listening to this uh, who have used Belay Solutions and worked with their assistants and had incredible results of freeing up their time, things they didn't even imagine that somebody else can do now is being done with excellence being done than they ever could have done it to begin with. And I want you guys to know that at Ramsey Solutions, uh, all of our leaders have assistants that we work with. We believe in it that much. So, Tricia, if people want to learn a little bit more on how they can get started with you guys, uh, where should they go to find out what they can do with you and where to get started? Yes. Yeah, so find us at belaysolutions.com and our website will have a ton of information about how you can leverage a virtual assistant and we'll be available to kind of talk through how that can look for you and your organization. I love it. Thanks, Tricia. Thank you. Thank you.